Now let's look at the evidence on how much the idea of increasing returns explains the content and structure of world trade. Just to review, the notion of increasing returns to scale suggests that something gets cheaper at the margin as you do more of it. This can be applied to the level of the firm, to the industry, or even a geographic region. And again, here we're comparing a factor endowment's view to an IRS, or increasing returns to scale view. The factor endowment's view is saying that a region has some significant advantage accumulated ex ante, such as having a lot of labor, which then makes it easier to export goods which are produced by a lot of labor. The increasing returns to scale stories are more of an ex post view, that is, you end up being good at something because you started doing that. Note that the increasing returns to scale view in general will require some extent of market or monopoly power, whereas the factor endowments view can be made consistent with either perfect competition or market power. We can look at possible predictions of increasing returns to scale theories in six different areas. The first is intra-industry trade. There's then the fact that similar countries tend to trade a lot with each other, that the gravity equation fits the data well, looking at firm level evidence, whether or not there is a home market effect, and finally the issue of path dependence in response to shocks. By the way, for much of the structure of this discussion, I'm relying on an online handout from David Donaldson at MIT, which you can find online here. Let's first consider intra-industry trade. For instance, you can imagine that Great Britain is selling, say, white shirts to India, and India is in turn selling colored or flowered shirts to Great Britain. You might think that each country has simply specialized in one kind of shirt, and it would seem that differing factor intensities are not explaining the fact that there is trade in shirts running both ways. But over time, the hecksher olean or factor intensity theories, they made a comeback on this point. If you develop a hecksher olean theory, but you allow the two countries to have different technologies, then you can, in fact, within a factor intensities framework, get this two-way trade across nations within a given sector. Intra-industry trade may also be the result of factors which are neither increasing returns to scale nor factor intensities, and in general on this whole point, there's a very good article by Donald Davis. Similar countries trade a lot with each other, such as the United States and Canada pictured here. At first glance, this would appear to be inconsistent with a factor intensities approach, because the factor intensities approach at least appears to suggest you get a lot of trade when the countries are very different. But again, if you modify the assumption of an identical technology within the factor intensities approach, it turns out that that too is quite consistent with the notion of similar countries trading a lot with each other. And on this point, do see our videos on the hecksher olean theorem. The so-called gravity equation seems to explain a great deal, and some economists believe that this is more readily compatible with an increasing returns to scale approach than with an approach which emphasizes factor intensities. To the extent that trade across great distances really is costly, you might think, well, this requires some strongly differentiated products to get that trade off the ground. But again, while this evidence is certainly consistent with increasing returns to scale theories, it's also consistent with the hecksher olean theorem and factor intensity approaches, where you have factor endowments driving specialization. To sum up these first three areas and maybe a single point, what we're seeing in the data is very strong evidence for specialization, but specialization here is the key, and specialization is not identical with increasing returns to scale. You can get specialization also from factor intensity approaches, again relaxing this assumption of identical technologies. There's a fourth source of evidence on behalf of increasing returns to scale theories, and this is somewhat more illustrative, and that is what is called firm-level evidence. So rather than looking at different industries or sectors, let's look at the behavior of individual firms, and we find a number of results which appear to suggest that in the arena of international trade, there's a lot of market power. So for instance, markups are falling with foreign competition, Import competing firms are cutting back their production when foreign competition goes up. And all in all, when you look at the entire package of propositions you see about individual firm behavior, this does seem to be fairly compatible with a model of monopolistic competition and differentiated products. 
Perhaps the most convincing piece of evidence from my point of view is the literature on what are called home market effects. And that literature suggests that countries which have a large home market for a good are also the countries which tend to export that good. Think of that large home market as having given the country a start in an area, and then because of increasing returns at either the firm or the industry level, well, the country becomes better and better at producing that good or service, and that eventually leads to export success. A simple example is that both Hollywood and Bollywood have large domestic markets for movies, and they have ended up being very successful exporters. The French at home drink a lot of wine, and they've ended up being fairly successful at exporting that wine. If you go to Germany, you'll see a lot of fancy kitchen stores with really sharp knives. And again, Germany has become a successful exporter in that area. The large home market effect is by no means always present, but we do see it a lot in the data, and I would recommend you take a look at these two pieces, both available online. Yet another way to think about increasing returns to scale theories is to ask questions about path dependence. So, for instance, do regions get nudged off increasing returns to scale paths, or do they bounce back? If you view productive success as being the result of basic fundamental endowments, which are not going away, you would think that if a country or region gets nudged off a path, that will end up mean reverting and getting back on that same production path. Alternatively, if you think it's a matter of accumulated experience based only on some very small initial advantage, you might think it's easier for a region or sector get, to get nudged off its path of success. If we look at cities which have been bombed, it seems that over time they revert back to where they would have been had the bombing not occurred, at least in terms of overall economic activity. So today in Japan, both Hiroshima and Nagasaki are fairly successful, fairly productive cities. It seems they had good factor endowments, and they managed to keep that advantage and then rebuild. The point that urban bombing shows a lot of mean reversion, and thus to some extent supports factor endowment theories, you'll see that discussed and illustrated in these pieces here. In other areas of urban history, we find examples where that initial nudge really seems to matter, and the importance of that nudge seems to persist. Memphis became a major American city at first because of its location on the Mississippi River. That location is no longer so important, but Memphis remains important as a city in Tennessee to this day, in part because it had such a significant early head start. On these nudge effects for cities, you should read Bleakley and Lynn, Portage and Path Dependence. One thing that's interesting about these urban literatures and these urban examples is that you're starting to see ways in which trade theory and economic geography, or location theory, actually overlap quite closely. So to sum up, it seems that increasing returns definitely matter for explaining international trade. There are some areas where there appears to be an observational equivalence between increasing returns theories and factor endowment theories, so we're still not sure how much but pretty much everyone agrees increasing returns are a very important idea for explaining the structure and content of cross-national and cross-regional trade.